Spendthrift Farm Stallions. First two-year-olds on the track by Golden Sense, Cross Traffic, It's My Lucky Day, Can the Man, and Shaking It Up, including Golden Sense's stakes winner, Pickett, a dominant nine-length winner in the $75,000 DS Shine Young Futurity at Evangeline. Spendthrift, the Breeders' Farm. Hi everybody, Dan Ullman along with Nicole Russo. Welcome to Spa Babies, presented by Spendthrift Farm, and Saturday's Spa Baby race is a good one. It's race number three, the grade two Adirondack for juvenile fillies. Let's take a look at this field going six and a half furlongs, Spendthrift Stallion flat out, represented by the number two Guacamole, going out for trainer Todd Pletcher. Louis Sias as the mount on Guacamole, eight to one on the morning line. Lyrical Lady, the number three, is your six to five morning line favorite. Nicole, we'll take this field in post position order, beginning with the number one, Mucho Amor. And we had a feeling Mucho Amor was going to be fast. She breezed a furlong in nine and four before selling for $260,000 in March. And as a Wesley Ward first time starter, as we see from this repay lay at Keeneland, we expected her to win. And I was surprised she wasn't the favorite. Yeah, definitely. Um, and she, you know, she scored kind of a game win there by a neck over Blame the Frog, who's come back to do some good things and flatter her a little bit. This is the first crop of Mucho Macho Man. And, you know, you remember him. He's a big, tall, long bodied horse who found his footing as an older horse and going long. So this is really, you know, not what I expected from his offspring that they'd be precocious and quick starting and fast early, but Mucho Amor is just a really talented looking filly. And I'm, you know, she's facing some formidable rivals here, but I'm surprised to see her at five to one on the morning line. Maybe the speed comes from the bottom of this family. The dam a stakes play sprinter on the dirt. She a half to a stakes winning dirt sprinter named Charming Ruckus. We have not seen this filly since April. She is stretching out a quarter of a mile. She's going to be facing other speeds. There are a lot of things perhaps working against Mucho Amor, but you do have have Wesley Ward in the corner, and this filly is pretty fast out of the gate. We'll move on to the number two, Guacamole, who dipped down to two to one favoritism in her career debut back on July the 26th. She is by Flat Out, the Spendthrift Stallion, and this was a bit of a controversial disqualification as they turn into the stretch. Guacamole's in the familiar Rapoli colors on the outside, and I kind of like the way she gamely came after this horse on the lead. Yes, yeah, she really did. And, you know, it was a controversial disqualification, but the, the horses, most horses, I should say, because some, I think, certainly do. You know, she, she crosses the line second by a nose. I don't think she's aware of whether she won or lost the race. She went out. She gave a good effort. I think she had a good experience, a good experience racing over this same track. And I think all of those things are very important because experience does count with these two-year-olds. A really professional performance for Guacamole. And talk about a pinhook, a $2,000 yearling who resold for $100,000 in March after breezing a furlong in 10 seconds. We see the a family of grade three stakes winning two-year-old Raja's Revenge. So there's some pedigree here with Guacamole who should be a nice price. The morning line favorite is the number three Lyrical Lady who has already raced once at this meet. And again, we had a feeling she'd be fast. She breezed a quarter mile in 20 and three before selling for $625,000 in March. No surprise she showed this kind of speed in her debut. I was surprised she was six to one, but Lyrical Lady put the boots to this field and earned a 75 buyer speed figure, far and away the best buyer of this bunch. Yeah, definitely. And you know, not only was she fast early, she kept pouring it on late to win as she pleased by nearly six lengths. Uh, beat a couple of fillies who I think are going to turn out to be pretty nice in that field, too. Steve Asbusen was on fire with his two-year-olds early in the meet. Uh, this filly was a $625,000 two-year-old, as you mentioned. After breathing that quarter mile, that can some sometimes indicate, you know, an early maturing, very fit horse. More than ready over an unbridled song there. I think that's a pretty terrific cross. Uh, for precocity, for success, Unbridled Song really emerging as a terrific broodmare sire. All three dams earned black type. The dam two-year-old grade three stakes place going long on the synth. Second dam stakes place dirt sprinter. Third dam grade three stakes winning dirt sprinter. Lyrical Lady looms the one perhaps to catch and beat. The number four is Grandma Gertie. And this source made her debut at Parks as the six to five favorite. A daughter of Uptown Charlie Brown who took no prisoners at Parks, just blasting out to a clear early lead and kept pouring it on in the stretch. 
I have no idea what she beat, but something tells me it's a lot less than what she's going to face on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, I think she's taking a big step up in class, and that's why, you know, she is 15-1 to 1 on the on the morning line here uh, for, you know, for some of the connections of her sire, Fantasy Lane Stable, Uptown Charlie Brown stud. Um, the, the Stallion Standing in Pennsylvania, which I can say, you know, that program has really, uh, you know, kind of grown in recent years. Broodmare sire Dixie Union, you know, it has produced quality fillies via that route. But, yeah, I think she's taking a big step up. Todd Pletcher, always dangerous in these two-year-old graded stakes races at Saratoga. He is represented by the number five, Virginia Eloise. This distance of six and a half furlongs, Virginia Eloise might be best suited to it because her debut came at six. She's the only filly in the race to have raced at six. She was part of a four-ply pace scrum on the turn. She dropped back, and I just love the way she professionally came again down towards the inside and inhaled this horse on the lead. It was a professional performance. She draws outside the other speeds, and she is very well bred. Yeah, definitely. Uh, not only being by Curlin, who has really developed into one of the elite sires in America, she's from the immediate family of Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile winner Liam's Map, who, of course, was a grade one winner here at Saratoga. A very quick filly in Taylor S. It's just a terrific and very active family. Uh, really liked, as you said, kind of the gameness and professionalism she showed in her debut. And in addition to that, you know, race at six furlongs, which none of the others have, she's got a pretty deep work tab, you know, going five furlongs, you know, in a lot of her recent moves. So I do think from, you know, kind of a fitness and conditioning standpoint, there's a lot to like there. Completing this field is New York bred Sue's Fortune for trainer Jeremiah Engelhart. This is a daughter of Jumpstart out of a five-time winning dam who has foaled four winners from five runners, and the dams are full to a nice New York bred, a multiple stakes winner named Talking Treasure. Now, this filly debuted at Belmont, showed excellent speed, won by the length of the stretch. The buyer's speed figure was solid, and again, a nice outside post position where Junior Alvarado can keep an eye on what Santana on Lyrical Lady and Castellano on Virginia Eloise, what they're doing. She could either go to the front, or maybe they'll sit on the outside with a nice prime stalking trip. Yeah, definitely. I do like that she's outside the speed, as I think, you know, we've got a lot of horses that are going to want to kind of run and gun here. Um, you know, as you said, one by the length of the stretch at Belmont with a nice fire speed figure. The, this once by Sire jump start, though, he was a good two-year-old, but some of his runners have kind of tended to prefer a little bit later. Lyrical Lady is going to be the favorite in the grade two Adirondack, and deservedly so off her sparkling debut try at the spa earlier this meet. Who are you picking in the grade two Adirondack? It's a great card featuring the four-star Dave later on. You know, I think I'm gonna take a little bit of a shot with Virginia Eloise to beat the favorite. Um, Lyrical Lady, I like that she's got a race over the track. Obviously, top-notch connection, really impressive debut. Um, you know, if she beats me, I'm gonna let her beat me. I could say the same about Wesley Ward's Philly down on the rail who might just gut it out of there and, you know, get the jump on these as they do so many times. Uh, but, you know, all that being said, Virginia Eloise, I, I like, as we said, the conditioning. I like that she's gone six furlongs and has those recent works, you know, going five at this track. Classy, classy page. I like that Javier Castellano gets the call. Um, you know, and as, as we talked a little bit about the pace setup, I like that she's out there in post five and can maybe watch some of the pace develop to her inside and get a nice stalking trip because I do think the pace is going to be hot here. Nicole, I agree with you. I'm going with the five Virginia Eloise over the three Lyrical Lady in the grade two Adirondack Stakes. It's Saturday's Spa Baby Race presented by Spendthrift.